warning. Strong adult language to follow in the video after this disclaimer. So if you are under the age of 18, please go away and go listen to Justin Bieber. Or if you just simply get offended by strong adult language, then please sit back and enjoy the show. What's up, YouTubers? The Polish Piper here. Boy, what a fucking day. Yeah, you're gonna hear me PMS and bitch and moan. But you know what? It's what I gotta do to get the stress out. First off, the housekeeping. The Jake Hackert. And then I'm smoking some Dunhill Royal Yacht. Courtesy of bacon and tobacco. Well, it's not just today that was kind of fucked up, but stuff that's been going on the past couple days that's been pissing me off. First off, is this bullshit with the Kardashians. Kim Kardashian getting divorced. Who didn't see that coming? Come on. You think that shit really is going to work out? Chris Humphreys was in for the ass. And Kim Kardashian was just in it for the feeling and the money. And that's making headlines. Ooh, Kim Kardashian files for divorce. Major headlines. I mean, come on, people. My turds make bigger headlines. I mean, there's, there's so many things I can name, but that just sets me off because Jersey Shore gets in the news uh, Kim Kardashian gets in the news. I mean, this is not newsworthy shit. Come on, get get serious, people. Oh, God. Pisses me off. Like Snooki, the one time she spoke for Rutgers, Un she, sp she was asked to speak at Rutgers University or something like that, and she got paid $35,000 out of the student's tuition money. Just to speak. Come on. Meanwhile, our veterans coming back from war, they have to look for jobs. Why don't you pay America? I'm not targeting all America, but just the dumb folk out there who live for reality TV. Pay our veterans who are coming back from war, pay them the $35,000 to speak. To, for them, for us to know what life is really like behind the lines. I mean, veterans from past foreign wars, they travel on their own to sign pictures, to sign books, and they get paid barely anything. Snooky situation. Ooh, Ronnie and Sammy breaking up nonstop, whatever. And this bullshit with Kim Kardashian filing for divorce. Okay, not wrong. 
Chris Humphreys is free to do whatever the hell he wants. And so is Kim. I ain't really gonna knock him for that. Oh, new lighter I got. A Vertigo. It's one of these. Works pretty good. I don't quite got the Dagner uh, exhale, but whatever. What else? I was just going to say something, but I forgot. I'm so freaking stupid. Oh, well, another thing. Kim Kardashian's mother is talking about the engagement ring that Chris Humphreys got her. It's a $2 million engagement ring. You know what I would do with $2 million? Oh my God. I would not buy my own woman a $2 million engagement ring, no matter how much money I had. And Kim's mother, Chris, is like, well, it's not good to be an Indian giver, you know, give it and then take it back. I mean, come on. She's like, the gift, the ring is a gift, the engagement ring which is supposed to symbolize the sacrament of marriage, entering the sacrament of marriage. And she wants Kim to keep it. Uh, no, that's, that's fucked up. Chris should sue the hell out of Kim to get that ring back. I mean, the guy was blindsided by her. I can't really bust on Chris Humphreys. Well, that didn't sound right. All right, I can't say shit about Chris Humphreys. Because the guy loved her, and she turned around and filed for a divorce. But whatever, stupid shit like that people are getting concerned with when there are matters all over the world. It's making headlines on news, on TV. Like, come on. Seriously. And bullshit with today at work. So, my schedule is 7 to 7 every single day. Any shift I work is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So, I get into work. My partner's at work. We're by the time clock. And my good supervisor tells us, okay, me and him got to get split up. One of us will stay on the 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. truck, and the other will go on the 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. other ambulance truck. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll volunteer to go on that because I volunteered plenty of times in the past to go on the other truck. The truck I'm usually on is a critical care truck. So I take care of, with unregistered nurse on board, critical patients sick, going for surgeries, going for bypass, cardiac catheterizations, anything. The BLS truck is, re is regular routine hospital patient transport from one facility to another. And that's usually busy. But you know, I don't mind being busy because I'm getting paid. So. I just said, just let me get out at 7 on time so I can get home, do my laundry, so I have a clean uniform for work the next day. So my supervisor is a good guy. He said he'll call my dispatcher and say, you know, he's volunteering to get off the earlier truck and get on the later truck. Just get him out at 7. And I called. At 4.30, said, hey, just a friendly reminder, I got to be out at 7 because I'm coming off the 7 to 7 truck to help you guys. Because one person from the 8 to 8 truck was missing. I'm sorry, this probably sounds boring, but this is what, I'll tell you what pissed me off. Oh, by the way, any smokes, this is for you. You should know what this is here. Good old black label. I know you talked about this before. Cheers, man. Ah, nothing like a good old swig. So, moving on. So, long story short, I say I called my dispatcher for the fair warning, man. I gotta be out at Simmons. All right, all right, just go do this job. I got one more pickup for you, and I'll let you go. So I go do that. I complete this, mind you, we were coming from South Jersey to go all the way back up to Northwest Jersey. We dropped off a patient in Tom's River. South Jersey, exit 80 something off the Garden State Parkway, if any of you are familiar with that stretch of highway. So we travel an hour and a half back up north 
to get another patient to go about 15-20 minutes ride back home. Wait. No, that's that's a different job. Alright, let me just cut this. Let me just cut to the chase. So we clear off of the one job and I think I'm gonna go home at six o'clock. He's like, Alright, I got one more for you, and that's it, you can go. I'm like, you know, that's fucked up. You said I he was gonna let me go, but you know what? This happens in my business all the time. So you know what? I can't expect anything to go my way. Gotta hope for the best and expect the worst. So you know what, and my partner's like, hey, well, at least we won't get out that late. But you know what, the main thing I'm concerned about is that I want to do my freaking laundry. What happens over here, people go do their laundry at the last second. They'll be here for the longest time, be lazy during the day, and at the end of the day, when my laundromat closes at fucking 9 o'clock, I have an hour and a half or so to do all my laundry so I can have a nice, clean set of uniforms for work. But no, and people use all the washing machines and all the dryers. For like small amounts of clothing. I mean, come on, that fucking pisses me off. So, I come home a little late. I don't get to do my laundry. No, I hold on. I get back to base. I'm so furious. I'm so furious. I punch out, and my uh, the night supervisor who was on taking in my paperwork and takes the keys back in. He tells me that my other partner who stayed on the earlier truck, he got out about three hours earlier, at four four thirty, and here I am getting out. 7.30, half an hour after the time I want to be out. So I was fucking furious at that point. I don't show my anger at work because it's not professional. And I don't want to lose my job. Because you'll lose, you'll lose your job over the stupidest little things these days. So I kept my anger inside me. That's why I had a nice little disclaimer in the beginning of this video. So I come back home, I'm like, you know what? I wasn't dirty today, no sweating. My uniform's clean, I cleaned the night before. So I'm just leaning down on the patio, spray it down with a bunch of cologne. It's airing out, it's cold outside, it's fresh, it's clean. I don't shit my pants, I don't stain myself, so I'm clean, trust me. I'm one of those very hygienic persons, people, sorry. But whatever, you know, I come home and then I got a love note on the fridge there from my wife. Oh, Nick, uh, can you do me a favor and can you uh, please clean my red uniform shirt, soak it in the water, hand wash it, and then, you know, uh, hang it out to dry. Like, I was going to do that for myself, but you know what? I don't want to be mad anymore because I'm at home. Don't want to be mad at my wife for something like that. You know, I'm here to relax now. The worst part of the day is over. I'm spending my time with you guys now, smoking my hacker. And I have some Black Label. Revisiting Black Label. I haven't had it in so long. And it's quite delicious. So it's Friday. Paycheck Friday for some people. Oh, man. So nothing else is going on right now. Just relaxing right now. Hanging out. I'm still at 169 subscribers. You know, money is really tight right now. Me and my wife are like, we're not struggling to make ends meet, but the, the money we have now is good. It'll, it'll hold us off for a, for a little while. But uh, we just got to learn. Well, 
particularly me because I'm buying tobacco, buying cigars, pipes. So I got to kind of hold off and bad news, sorry to deliver to you guys, but I know a bunch of you guys were excited about my custom already that I designed and I'm going to have Marco Biagini uh, make for me. That's going to be put on hold for a while because I really need to save up, you know, take care of, you know, my needs, you know, like Stogie Farts mentioned, you know, he's got a, what's the Stogie Farts? I was saying that before, I'm sorry, it's just, I've had a stressful day. So you gotta take care of your needs first, your family first, and then YouTube second, pipe smoking second. But as far as my contest, uh, I'm gonna formally announce it when it's 200 subscribers. I'm gonna keep adding and adding and adding as much prizes as I can. They're all coming out of my pocket. Because I really love how generous the pipe community is on YouTube. And I just want to give away. Oh, congrats to uh, Backy Butcher for winning the pipe rack from Hendu. And congrats to, all, to like, there's been like a recent abundant of, there's been an abundance of hacker openings. Uh, Smokey Joe Tennessee got his first hacker. Um, Evil Masher got his first hacker. Tobacco Franks got his first hacker. Who else am I forgetting? I think I'm forgetting somebody else. No, I'm sorry if I forget. Is uh, that's that's what my job lets me. Been ten years doing this. Sick people, ambulances, sirens, all messing with my head. But yeah, my life is being consumed by pipe smoking and YouTube. Which is a good thing. My wife hates it that I don't spend enough time with her, but you know what? You guys are my buddies. Where's my buddy? Right there. You guys. This Dunhill Royal Yacht is pretty good. Uh, if you guys smoked it, let me know what you think about it. I need to get some more aromatics. There's the aromatic, only aromatics I got are... Shit. Oh. Mm. I just fucking forgot. I remembered I forgot. And I... Blue Note from Dan Tobacco. And I got McBaron's Vanilla Cream. And I got a, a little blend bacon and tobacco uh, sent to me when, he, when I got this hack, hacker from him. I really want to explore more. I really want to get something from uh, Boswell's, but you know what? Just the time and the money and it's just, it's just hectic. It's crazy. So I'm just going to smoke whatever I have left and just see where everything goes from there. Oh, man. Oh. Let me tell you, now this video is probably going to turn into, I don't know, one of my long videos again. But another thing that pisses me off is how people talk about my weight. I guess for their own entertainment. Now I have a good sense of humor about my weight. I'm like, yeah, I love to eat because I'm Polish. But anytime somebody ever sees me like, hey, bro, who's feeding who in the family? I mean, anytime, hey, you're getting bigger by the minute. Like, seriously, I fucking, that's fucking rude. And it just pisses me off, especially in the work setting, when there's other people around and patients around. Like the other day, I got out of my ambulance, I dropped something on the floor, I bent over to pick it up, and my co one of my other co-workers from my other job saw me, and he's being fucking stupid, and he goes like this, mmm, mmm, because, because I got a big ass when I bent over to pick my clipboard up. And then he's like, who's, who's, feed, who's feeding who in the family? 
Mike Greeley saying me and my wife are fat. I don't take kind of that shit. Because I struggle with my weight. When I'm on an ambulance for 12 hours a day, all I see is fast food, fast food, fast food. When I first started my job, I was about 160 pounds. 160. And now I'm at 260. It's hard to eat healthy when you're in EMS. Sure, it can be done, but you know it's not that easy. Oh, man. Yeah, man. It's just... It's just crazy being me. Hold on. I gotta go take a crap. Oh, man. Uh, here I sit, same as ever, took a dump and pulled the lever, the toilet clogged, the water flowed, the lookout world, some other load. Man, I feel better. Alright, enough of this shooting the shit. I'm done. I'm gonna go have some more bag label. Any smokes, cheers, and everybody else that busted their ass this entire week. My pipe to you and a drink to you. Good night, everybody.